on this episode of Watch Time, we'll be talking about a topic that gets a lot of pushback, buyer's personas, and why you need them right after this. Welcome back to Watch Time, everybody. So today's episode is going to be about personas. And I feel like this is such a important topic because we hear it all the time from just customers. And I know marketing customers that we work with hear it from even their higher ups. People do not want to use personas because first off, either they don't know what it is or they're worried that it's going to um, isolate customers and then leave money on the table. And in this episode, we're really going to talk about why that is not the case. Yeah, let's talk about those hesitations a, a little bit more first. Um, you know, because in in general, it sounds like a good idea. You know, you, you want to know what your your tar- your ideal target customer looks like. You know, how they think, what their intentions are, their goals are, because you're trying to align that with your product. It sounds mm-hmm. like a great idea. Yes, we should know who we're talking to. But it, it, we do get a lot of resistance, and I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of confusion around it too. So maybe we should kind of touch on some of the hesitations we hear. Yeah. I, I I think, oh, I think one of the key hesitations, the main hesitation, in my opinion, is really just being afraid that you're not going to get all the customers that you can get, that you're leaving money on the table. Because if you're talking to one specific person, other people are going to be like, well, this isn't for me. There's this idea that you're ignoring everybody else. Yes. Yeah. And, I, and I've, I've seen the hesitation. I know like a lot of the questions we ask clients when we first bring them on and we're trying to figure out the video is, okay, who are we talking to? And if they don't know, then we always start to like, okay, well, like, you know, what types of people buy this product? Like, like who's your key product, uh, customer that's buying this? Like, what do they do for a living? Where do they live? What's their average age? Like, are they a man or a woman? Or what, What's you know, their just, income? Like, yeah, yeah, all, kinds of things. all these things. And like, mm-hmm. I feel like we get a lot of resistance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, def- definitely. Um, and, and the other thing we get a lot is... Um, that we market to everyone. Everyone is our, is our customer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I had a dollar for every time somebody told me everyone is our customer, yeah. I could just retire now. Yeah. So <laughs> so people, people, you know, that's a common thing we get when, when you know, we're, we're talking about maybe focusing on, on uh, you know, one specific um, person. But, mm-hmm. but there is, I think, while trying to avoid risk, there is inherent risk mm-hmm. in the fact that, you're casting a really wide net mm-hmm. and you know may- maybe you are you are getting some people out of that that are you know buying from you but maybe you're also missing the opportunity to really hone in on um, you know who could really be great um, customers mm-hmm. like you know yeah. maybe maybe spend more money and and maybe the uh, quantity isn't so important as the quality of, of who you're actually trying to reach. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a hundred percent accurate. I think one thing to think about, and I I feel like this is the the thing that I wish we could just start by telling all of our clients and and anybody that's watching this. If you're on a marketing team and you're getting pushback like this, if you're another video production person, if you're anybody who does anything in the marketing content space and you get pushback, the first thing I think you can really do to avoid this is when you're talking to your boss or your customer is ask them what are the pain points that you solve and they're going to and many products and services probably have a list of pain points i can think of the pain points that we solve um are definitely a list and it's just and we're selling video we're Mm -hmm. not selling i mean it's a complex product but we're not selling you know like you know multiple products really selling multiple types of video but um i think the key to this is because what happens is after you list out what those pain points are then you go back to that customer or your boss and say, okay, so does everybody have those pain points or are there like certain people that have them? And I'm like, you know, and they'll probably go, oh, no, not everybody has these pain points. Like somebody may only have pain point A and maybe C, but then maybe somebody only has pain point B. And so I think that's a great first place to start because then you go, well, then if not everybody has all these pain points, then we're not trying to talk to everybody in this particular piece of content. Yeah, I like that. That's a really eye-opening exercise, I think, for people to do. You're really going the reverse end of that. And and I think that's one of the key things about personas that people don't really think about is like when you make that messaging for everybody, you're not – the content doesn't turn into – 
as Todd Hartley always says with Video Marketing Mastery, a dog whistle that like people go, well, wait a second, that's for me. Mm -hmm. Because now they're just like, oh, okay, yeah, that, 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 I don't have that. And then they tune it out. Yeah. And I think that's, and, and maybe that pain point that you were going to talk about or that person that you're trying to target, maybe they're later down in the list and now they've already scrolled past it. And now that awareness is gone and now they're on to your competitor's product who actually is using a persona and they go, oh, that's me. They're talking to me. Yeah, yeah. I think that that really, um, when we were preparing for this episode, you know, we talked about how um, messaging to everyone is actually messaging to no one because you're mm -hmm. really lacking the clarity in your message um, that you could be providing if you were honing in a little bit more tightly. The clarity always makes me think of Donald Miller. If you confuse, you lose. Building a story brand, and it's 100% accurate. People that do not understand the messaging, they tune it out. You only have so many calories that you can burn a day mental calories and yeah. then when you get to that area where you're like i don't know who this is for you're like on to the next and then you lose business to somebody who does know how to do that so it's it's kind of like the real question should be to your to your customer or your bosses is when you don't use want to use personas because well, we don't want to isolate anybody because we sell to everybody be like that's fine well our customers are probably using them so we'll just lose out to them yeah that's a great great point um so in terms of maybe getting your bosses on board mm -hmm. or trying to implement, you know, a persona um, exercise in, in your in your business, mm -hmm. um, what are some some places that people can start? I really like the idea of, of starting with pain points because mm -hmm. I think you know that people that those can't be argued with. You know, the, yeah. those are kind of uh, pr pretty straightforward. And then thinking of the people who have those pain points, but how else can maybe people start incorporating personas into their into their marketing? I think that the, the best thing you could do first, and this is like what I've recommended in any of our videos we've talked about this, is look at who you are currently serving. Because your personas are probably in there. Um, not probably, they are in there. When I say probably, what I mean is you may have customers that you don't currently serve that you want to serve, and those would be other personas that you have to do research on, additional research to figure out who they are. But if you look at your current customer base and say, okay, well, what's What's normal about all the like all the people we serve? Like, like what do the they have in common? Yeah. Yes, exactly. The average age. Like, what are their pain points? Where do you know what's their income level? What do they do? Where do they live? All those things are important because then you can develop a persona um, around those things. And I guess the the rule of thumb, the way that I was kind of taught through um, Ben Amos's uh, blue, like video blueprint, was that you really don't want to have more than three or four personas that you're going to be targeting. So like really as a company, just try and identify three or four. And from there, you're going to direct messaging to those people. And I know what the pushback is going to be because I've seen it and I've heard it. But Bill, we sell five different products and there are three personas for every product. Okay, that may be the case, but just start off with three. So look at your business as a whole. Don't look at the product necessarily yet. And just figure out who those three that you could start messaging are. And the reason I say that is because if you take the time to go and do three for each product and you have five products, you're talking about 15 personas, you'll just quit in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna be like, this is too much. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. So just start with three or pick one product line and just start by coming up with who are the two, you know two to three people that are on that product line. Yeah, I mean, something is, is better than, than kind of blindly going into it. At least you're being a little bit more strategic if you're trying to hone in on a few. And then as you continue to go along, you get more and more refined with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And that's, and that's the thing is it's right now, if you're not using them at all, your messaging is very broad. And if you can just kind of even test it, like if there's some, if there's some skepticism, because there probably will be, just test it like that and then kind of open it up from there. Any other tips you want to leave our audience with about developing personas before we sign off? I mean, I would say really like look at, you know, us, what, when you come to pain points, right? Look at the pain points you have. Do you have products that like, do you have customers that those pain points serve? And if not, and you're like, well, you know, pain points one through five. Okay. So pain points um, two through five are our current customers, but pain point one hasn't been addressed. So there's an opportunity to develop a persona around that. And this is where... Um, in both of these, this is where you get to kind of do some like a uh, little bit of research and then also like create that fictitious character. Mm -hmm. So like maybe you don't know a lot about that person that has that pain point, but start to think like, well, where would that person hang out? Where would that person live? About how old is that person? Like, and develop that, that persona. And then once you have them, you know, whether it be that one or the ones that you have internally, 
start to t develop your messaging around them. And when you talk to the camera, I always like to say, imagine your ideal customer or imagine that persona and you're having that conversation with them. If you're watching this right now and you're like, man, Bill is talking directly to me, you're probably my target customer or my persona. And that's why it might not be you specifically, but um, you fall within line in line with that. And if you're and even if you're not and you're like hearing this, it's because it's targeted to you. So that's one good thing to think about. Exactly. I mean, once you get in that headspace, I think people will really be surprised how much that really like helps you resonate with with the um, customer's pain points and needs and how that's really going to change your messaging and your overall marketing when you really start to talk more strategically. Well, if you try to be something for everyone, then you're something for no one. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a great example of this, and this is this is a great way to look at it, um, high performance vehicles. I know we've talked about this before. Um, I am not the person that's going to buy a high performance vehicle. I don't have the money to buy one, uh, nor am I a car guy. So I'm not really like someone who's going to invest in that. I'm just happy with my car that gets me from point A to point B that's well cared for. So that being said, if you produce messaging to everybody and you're sending it out to me, there is nothing in that messaging that's going to get me to go, gee, you know what? I think I'm going to buy one of these. I'm just not. It's not for me. Mm -hmm. But if you really think about who you're trying to target and you focus on those personas, then that messaging won't even make it to me. Yeah. It, it, it won't be, it's not for me, it's not going to me. And now you're redirecting that messaging to people that it is for, whereas before if it was wide open, maybe it's going to me and you're missing the guy or woman that would actually buy that car. Yeah. Yeah, so think about that. You know, maybe maybe any hesitations about wasting marketing dollars or missing mm -hmm. people. Start thinking about it. Um, you know, where where maybe you're actually missing out on opportunities because you are casting that wide net. And I would say, if anybody's interested in learning a little bit more about personas outside of this episode, episode number fifty, where we got to sit down with um, Allison Halco, we talked a little bit about it, and it's a great resource. So go check that out. Um, I think I mentioned in that episode, HubSpot has a persona builder. It's free. It's well worth going to give that a shot. It'll kind of guide you through what you need to look at. And it'll actually build personas for you and give them little pictures and names and things like that. So you can start there and kind of branch out from that point. Yeah, that's a great place to start if you're like, what the heck are personas? And I have no idea what this episode is talking about. Go back there and then rewatch. <laughs> yes. So, um, well, thanks you know, so much, Kathy, for having this conversation with me. It's an important one. It's something that we'll probably talk about again because it's, it's that essential. <laughs> Without a doubt. So, <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening to Watch Time. We hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And if you want your question answered on our podcast, go to flexmediacle.com backslash watch time.